Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about one of the more unusual data components of Unity's Entity Component System, which is known as the System State Component. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about what the System State Component is, when to use them, and then I'm going to be showing you how to use them in the tutorial section of this video where we're going to be recreating this sample project that you see playing behind me. Now, before we get into it, I'd just like to say if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or any suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev Discord. So let's get into it. What is the system state component? Um, now, the system state component is kind of an interesting one. I feel like the name is a little bit misleading, um, but basically the intended use for them is to clean up external resources that are associated with a specific system. So it's similar to having like an eye disposable interface on a component. The kind of idea is that through code, these system state components are added to entities and the system state components might contain some external resources like files or textures or something like that. And then our system can use those, you know, throughout the lifetime of that entity. Then when that entity is destroyed, all the components of course off that entity are going to be removed and freed from memory except for the system state components. The system state components will stick around after the entity is essentially considered destroyed. And then when we're kind of in this state where all the other components have been destroyed and the system state component is still there, then we can kind of trigger off some cleanup behavior to you know, do any um, you know, cleanup that we need to do on those resources that are associated with that system state component. And really the idea here is to just avoid callbacks and keep kind of the management of these external resources um, all to one system here. So when do we use these? Basically, kind of like I mentioned before, the intended use is for cleaning up of external resources. So let's say a system maybe needs reference to a file. It can create an entity with one of these system state components uh, that has access to this file. It can kind of do anything that it needs to do throughout the lifetime of this entity. Um, then when this file is no longer needed and the entity gets destroyed, the system state component is going to uh, still persist after the entity has been destroyed. So then at that point, we can perform any cleanup that we need to do on the file. Uh, maybe if there's any you know, additional data that we need to say, you know, maybe like a timestamp of when the entity was destroyed, and then we can actually like save out that file to the disk. Now the documentation does say that as a general rule, these system state components um, should only be read only from anything other than the system that created it um, but there's nothing actually preventing you from you know modifying this component from any other systems so now let's kind of transition into how do we actually use these so there's kind of three phases that we need to think about um, when we're using these system state components so the first phase is basically detecting when um, you know a specific system state component needs to be added to an entity so normally the way that this is going to work is maybe there's a specific tag or component that marks this entity as needing a system state component. So then we can have a system that basically filters for everything that has this specific tag component um, that's just a regular data component like we normally would have, but it does not already have the system state component. And then in there basically we just add the system state component and then once it has both that um, specific normal data component as well as the system state component, it's no longer going to you know, run that system obviously, so it's not gonna add you know, multiple of these system state components to that entity. Not that you could do that anyhow. But then kind of the main normal use update phase of this is when we filter out across entities that have both the normal data component as well as the system state component. Um, you know, we can just kind of perform some general operations that we need to do um, referencing both these components. And then the last thing that we need to do is detect when these kind of cleanup needs to happen. Um, so this basically occurs when the entity does not have that, you know, normal data component that we're filtering against, but it does have that system state component still. So this basically means that the entity um, is in kind of a destroyed state when all the other components have been removed but only that one system state, or if there were say multiple system state components um, is still existing. So that's kind of when we can detect basically when that entity is in a destroyed state and then we can run our cleanup steps after that. 
And then the last thing that we need to do is actually remove the system state component from that entity. Once that final system state component has been removed from the entity, then the entity is actually considered destroyed and then the ID can be recycled. All right, so now let me show you how to actually do this in a practical example. Um, this may not exactly be the intended use of system state components, but it is a good way to kind of demonstrate how they work. Um, and I do think that it is a pretty good use of them. I would actually consider using a pattern like this um, in a game project that I was working on. Now, credit where credit is due, I did come across this use case um, actually in the Unity forums. Uh, someone named Nicholas Gromlich posted uh, this kind of use case for something that he had in his game. Basically, he was working on um, kind of a mobile game and wanted to use some much more lightweight shadows for better performance on the mobile devices. And he didn't want to just basically do some kind of like normal parenting of uh, just kind of like a sprite under the uh, unit because uh, the unit could actually, you know, fly up above the playing field. Uh, so he wanted that kind of shadow to stay on the ground. So he didn't want any uh, kind of parenting or anything like any transform parenting to happen like that. Um, so basically he's using this system state component for, to actually uh, kind of mirror the X and Z position across the bottom of the game board. And then by using these system state components, we can kind of uh, control when we want to add, update the position, as well as remove these components from the game world. So let me go ahead and show you how this is all implemented now. So starting off with the system state component right now, you'll see that it looks very similar to uh, a normal data component. Of course, it is a public struct. In this case, I've called it shadow state data. I think um, you know, just putting state data at the end of this um, just kind of allows us to kind of mark this as a system state component. And you see that it does implement the I system state component data interface. If you actually go into the I system state component data interface, that itself implements the I component data interface. Um, so basically all the same rules apply to system state components as normal data components, and we can use them in basically the exact same fashion um, as normal data components. So you see in this case, I just have a reference to a public shadow entity. This is basically going to be, um, you know, just the little shadow image that, um, is going to be moving around on the ground. Now you see I have this spawn capsule system. Basically this is just going to spawn a new capsule every time I press the one key. Uh, there's nothing kind of out of the ordinary happening here. You'll see that um, we're basically just instantiating this normal capsule prefab into the world. And you'll see that this capsule prefab is nothing special. It basically just has the convert to entity script on it. And then it also does have the capsule move data authoring script, um, which contains some data about how this entity should move through the world. And then finally, it has this shadow tag, which is basically the tag that we're going to be using to tell the game to add the system state component to this entity. The next step, you'll see that I have this move capsule system here. This is a pretty simple system. Basically, it just looks for everything with a translation as well as a capsule move data. And then it's just gonna go ahead and move the capsule basically forward and gonna have it bouncing up and down on a cosine wave. If, however, it has been alive for longer than we've basically set it to, it's going to head and destroy the entity at the end. So if we go over to Unity and enter play mode, and I'll just hit the number one key, you'll see that we spawn kind of a new capsule that just kind of goes across the world um, and then reaches the end. At this point, we have not spawned the shadow yet, so you see that there's no shadow um, under the entity, so they're just kind of like floating in midair, and we don't really have a reference to uh, where it is in our game world. So now here's where we'll get to the spawn shadow system. Basically, this is going to... Um, look for everything that has the shadow tag, but does not yet have the shadow state data. And really all this does is adds a new shadow state data component. That's again, the uh, system state components with a new uh, shadow entity prefab. It's just gonna go ahead and add that component to the entity. So at this point, we'll come back to Unity and enter play mode and I'll press the number one key to go ahead and spawn the capsule. And you'll see that a shadow spawns basically in our game world here but it's not yet mirroring the position um, of the new capsule. You'll see that if I go ahead and you know add a couple more of these, you'll see that kind of the shadow gets a little darker and darker as we've um, you know added more shadows into the world. So the next thing is to actually get the shadows to follow the entity. You see this is done in the move shadow system. Um, basically, this is looking for everything with the shadow tag as well as with the shadow state data and a translation component. 
So this is actually happening on the capsule entities and this is going to be pushing the data um, to the shadow entities. So this is not actually being ran on the shadow entities, but basically you'll see that we get a reference to the shadow entity here. Uh, just by using the shadow state data dot shadow entity so this is our system state data component um, that's what we're using to get a reference to the shadow entity um, here we'll just go ahead and create a new shadow translation we'll set its value to the translation value of the capsule and we'll just go ahead and set the y position to be just above the ground so this basically uh, looks like the shadow is moving across the ground and then finally we'll just go ahead and set the component on the shadow entity uh, using that shadow translation variable that we've just created here. So coming back to Unity, we'll enter play mode and you'll see that the shadow is going to uh, follow the capsule under the ground all the way until the capsule is destroyed. However, you see that the cap or the shadow is still present in our game world. So that's kind of the final piece of this puzzle. We just go ahead and need to um, actually prompt the game to clean up these shadows after the main capsule entity has been destroyed. And then so one thing to note is actually if we come over to our entity debugger, you'll see that I do have a couple of these capsule prefabs and shadow prefabs down here. Uh, these are actually the instances of those objects that I've created. Um, so for example, if you look at this one here, and we go over to the inspector, you'll see that the only component associated with the capsule prefab is just this shadow state data component. Um, whereas if we look at, say, the uh, kind of base prefab, you see that this has things that we would more expect, like the capsule move data, local to world, translation rotation, and the shadow tag. Um, now remember, when this entity is destroyed, basically most of this stuff goes away, but we are still left with that system state component. So then finally, to actually clean up the shadow, I have this clean up shadow system. You'll see that this is looking for all the entities that do not have a shadow tag, but do have a shadow state data component. Again, this basically means that we can only get to this point if the shadow tag is no longer existing on the entity, but the shadow state data is still existing on the entity. And we can only get to that if the entity is destroyed, but the shadow state data component is still sticking around. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just using an entity command buffer, we're going to do a destroy entity passing in the shadow entity. So this is actually going to destroy the shadow off the ground. And then the final thing that we need to do is we need to remove the shadow state data component just off our capsule entity here so that the entity is actually destroyed. If we didn't do this, um, the system would actually just continue trying to run even though this entity has been destroyed. So we'd kind of get into uh, some weird situations there. So now you'll see what happens when we spawn uh, new capsules into the world. They're gonna kind of go across the world like this. And when they get destroyed, the shadow is destroyed with them as well. So, you know, we can continue just, you know, putting a bunch of these guys into the world and everything just basically looks like it should and then you'll see over in the entity debugger we don't have any um, extra of these capsule prefabs or shadow prefabs sitting in here everything is basically just cleaned up the uh, capsule prefab and the shadow prefab these are kind of the base prefab ones those are always going to be there so anyways that's just about going to do it for today's video i really hope that you did enjoy it and you learned about how to actually use these system state components again this may not exactly be the intended use of how to use these um, that i went over in this tutorial video but I hope it did give you kind of a good visual representation and kind of understanding of how these work. Um, I know in the documentation, it can be a little bit abstract about what these things actually do. So again, I do hope that this video helped you kind of understand these a little bit better. So once again, that's going to do it for today's video. If you did enjoy it and you learned something, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and the data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.